Good afternoon, everyone. Oh, today's the 4th of July. Happy Independence Day to the Americans, about. Yep. So, uh, I wasn't really in the mood to record today. I was pretty tired. But, um, I just watched Nintendo Capri Sun do his start as, um, new Pokemon LP, so it got me in the mood to record. His, uh, he was cracking me up in that video because he's doing it blind, so it's funny. But I used to play a lot of Pokemon back in the day. But I, I never played Sapphire, but whatever. We're not playing Pokemon. We're playing Dangerous Waters. Alright, so this is the campaign. Um, I love how it says like campaign, so there's like, I mean, people, you can create missions in this game. I've never really created a mission or done like, well, no, I've created some missions, but I've never done like a user made campaign, so I might look into that eventually. But yeah, this is Russian Rebellion, so obviously involves a rebellion in Russia. <laughs> Alright, so we got, I don't know, what is it, like 10 missions here, 11 missions? And each mission, you can choose different platforms to do. Alright, so I'm going to be in L.A. in this first mission because I haven't played in L.A. yet in any of these videos. I'm going to get an American sub in. But please let me know if you're interested in seeing me play as other platforms. I will do so gladly. I just don't think I want to be doing all the platforms for every single mission because it's going to be like 55 missions to do. <laughs> and some of them are kind of redundant. So let me know if there's any particular I'll, I'll I'll like when I do a mission I'll show you guys which which um things we can do as and what their briefings are and stuff maybe so then you guys can like I'll I'll choose which one to do and then if you guys want to see another one you can just like leave me a comment or something and let me know but right now I'm going to be the LA sub on this first mission we're supposed to do rebel threat assessment if you're the Akula we do a threat assessment as well because this is pro loyalist which is like um the uh the power in Russia that the rebe that the rebels are rebelling against so, so we're tasking, if, if we were to play as the Akula, we'd be tasking the Rebels as well. And then the P3 Orion is doing just about the same thing as the first sub, as the LA. Um, they both have neutral biases, but the P3 is doing service monitoring and communications intercept. Alright, so here we go. Let's play as the old uh, LA. I'm not expecting any resistance or anything like that. I have normal RO, ROE, rules of engagement. Our mission penetrates possible the Avanchinskaya Avanchin, Avanchin, Avanchin Inlet. Oh my god, my Russian's so rusty. It'd be easier for me to read it if it wasn't transliterated into English. Uh, surveil the Kamchatka shipyard, monitor all ship traffic, identify foreign merchant shipping, identify warships, including submarines. ROE, authorized to engage other warships only if they've shot at you. So we have no ROE in this mission that other than self-defense that's what the default ROE is, is self-defense so I'm just gonna do it as such so let's do it oh, I'm gonna adjust my mic a little bit oh okay now that should be fine no oh, no 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 don't look don't look don't look I had truth on from the last mission <laughs> sorry okay we're at 80 feet so we're a little bit low or a little bit deep a little deeper than I want to be so let's go to periscope depth Make my depth zero. Just speed of Six, time a little bit. Seven feet, die by. Uh, let's see if this microphone wants to cooperate today. Start listening. Start listening. Nope. Uh, well, can I do this? Raise the periscope. Start listening. Eh, uh, I don't know. All right. Uh, raise the periscope. Raise the ESM. Raise the radio. Why not? Just in case any kind of shit develops. Some ROE changes on the fly. I want to make sure I have that info in case I have to shoot at someone or I have to run away. I like to go a little shallow on the periscope, especially in these higher sea states, because it makes it easier to see. But you don't want to go too shallow, because then your ship will be like, oh, we're trying to surface, aren't we? <laughs> and then you don't want to surface. Oh, shit. Here we go. Mark. Contact bearing two, six, seven. Radio. New, message traffic received. New message traffic received from Commander Submarine Group 7 to Commander USS Topeka. Uh, Pacific Fleet, 7th Fleet. Critical intelligence requirement. U.S. government needs to know number of Russian SSBNs in and around Rubachi Submarine Base and Kamchatka Shipyard. As secondary OBJ, perceive vicinity same and gather required information. Begin your search along the coastline to the northeast or southwest of the inlet. BT. I don't know what BT means. There's a sub. Uh, that looks like that is not in a cool. Uh, it might be. I don't. I'm not seeing a sail. Oh, he's diving. He's diving. Take a picture. New contact. Bearing. Photo. Six. Five. Radio. New message traffic received. 
From Commander Submarine Group 7 to Commander USS Topeka, subject operation under 106 Intel in update. Russian Rebel Com intercepts indicate that the Rebels would require assistance to defeat the Loyalists and maintain control in eastern Russia. Likewise, previously intercepted Russian Loyalist communications indicated that Russia is prepared to go to war with the U.S. if the U.S. aids the Rebels in their efforts. Be aware. I need to find out what BT means. Is he diving? I don't know. It looked like he was diving. Let's see. Looking around. Looking around. Looking around town. I'm not seeing... And then up here you can turn on LLTV. It can make it easier to see the ships. They tend to be black. Oh, I missed that guy. No, I had him before. That is a, uh... It's a spy ship. You can tell by those, uh, those radar domes or whatever. It's been together intel. Sometimes I have to deal with them on a lot of missions. Here's another sub. That is a Nikula or a Victor. Goal complete. Goal complete. To Commander USS Topeka. Current ops. Fused reports from multiple surveillance platforms indicate that you have identified all SSN threats operating in vicinity. BZ, continue with your mission. Oh, there's the shipyard. Hello. New contact. Bearing three, zero, nine. Oh, there's another ship. That is a little patrol boat or something. Goal complete. Mission accomplished. Oh my god. You've identified all rebel vessels operating in vicinity entrance of Shinskaya Inlet. Continue with my mission. My mission is done. Yep, this is a very easy mission, so I'm not going to just stop the recording now. <laughs> I don't get why counter-detected is sometimes an objective. We didn't detect the SSBNs. Uh, so, uh, sonar might be... Uh, auto crew is off. Oh, we got a target here. Mark this. All right, well, whatever. We're, we're good. This mission's done. All right, let's do it. Next mission. So I'm going to save this as mission 01. 688I. That is what the Los Angeles' code name is, the 688, because the first ship's hull number was 688, so it is a 688I. Well, we, we play as the 688I. That's the improved. That's the, the, uh, the third tier of... Um, Los Angeles class submarine. Got vertical launch too, so we can launch cruise missiles. So campaign, mission two, Vladivostok. Sea Wolf tasking, rebel threat assessment again. Uh pro loyalist, indication of warning rebel threat assessment. Special ops insertion at Khabarovsk. Khabarovsk. Uh neutral. How, and then sometimes like ships from the same country can have different biases, which I always found weird. Or we can play as this kilo as pro loyalist, which is rebel threat assessment. Um, let's do something fun. Let's do special ops insertion at Habarovsk. Habarovsk. I don't know how to pronounce that. Something like that. Transit to the designated coordinates of vicinity 47.3 north, 138.43 east, and deploy the special forces transferred to you yesterday. Maintaining covert operations is primary concern. Not authorized to attack. Avoid contact with the Chinese. Why are the Chinese around? Avoid contact with the Americans. Be aware of detection by rebel patrol boats and submarines making their way to and from Pavlo Pavlovskaya Naval Base. Very good. Let's do it. Got some spec ops ins insertion up in here. I guess we're uh, sending some spec ops to some base to, um, oh. Oh no, Habarovsk. I thought it looked like we were off China or something. Drop off point A. Three knots. We are just chugging along. All right. Auto crew is off on all sensors. Very good. Uh, what is my depth? Raise the periscope. I'm gonna raise the ESM mast as well. Extend the electronics. And the radio mast. The radio mast was crucial on the last mission. If I didn't have that up, I would have known my mission was done already. Okay, but uh, there's something you should know. Like as you can see, the sea state's a little choppy. It's not that crazy, but it's definitely choppy. The closer you are to the surface, the worse your sonar performs. And the bad thing about kilos, no towed array, which is why I usually don't like playing as them. So, uh, I'm gonna check around a little bit here, but then I'm actually gonna have to go deep if I want to get any submarine con or uh, underwater contact. So I might vector off to the side here so I can stay underwater and uh, so you don't have to worry about your um, your toad array straightening out which is nice so I'm going to do this 
And then I always just make it so it's just like the shortest possible point to the drop off point. So I don't have to waste as much time. As you can see, our ETA is 3 hours and 39 minutes. Back in the day before I knew that you could speed up time, I used to just try and go as fast as I could without being detected. <laughs> but now we can speed up time. Anything on the ESM, I doubt anyone is transmitting. Nothing on the radio, I'm not really expecting. Well, let's check our mission status. Delivered Clemendals, reached exit area. That's it. Okay. Uh, nothing special. Um, let's see what's going on the scope. Uh, I'm gonna go shallower a little bit just to try and get a better bead on shit. Because with these like s waves rolling around, it can be really hard to see shit. And really annoying. I don't know if they can actually like detect my periscope with radar, some kind of fancy schmancy radar. Okay, I'm not seeing anything yet. Scope is clear. And no night vision on the Kilo either. It's a pretty low tech fucking submarine. But I am working on a, a ship in my internship to track these things more easily. Uh, so I guess that's kinda cool. What's my course? Two six three. Let's oh no 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 stop 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 stop. One more no no no. Zooming can be tricky. I'm not seeing anything on my scope. Not a thing. We have better luck on the sonar. They might be over the horizon. If they're patrol boats, I'm not even going to see them for a while because they're so small. Oh, the sun is in my eyes. I'm not seeing shit. Usually in those missions, when you're close to shore, you can pretty much assume that nothing is behind you. That's just the way they like make their missions. <laughs> yeah, so I usually don't look behind me, but sometimes I do. As you can see up top with the bearings, it's a freaking long time to pan around, so I'm going to zoom out once. Just trying to see if I see anything on the horizon, but I'm not seeing shit. But I'm not even all the way back around here, so hold your fucking horses, mister. Oh, but yeah. AC is broken in my house, and it's fucking 90 degrees out right now. I'm boiling. This shit sucks, but I got a fan blowing on me, so I guess that's good. Alright, scope is clear. No context, Captain. Scope is clear. Makes me think of Hunt for Red October, one of my favorite movies, and it's a great book too. If you like submarines and the Cold War, you should get the Hunt for Red October. It's an awesome, awesome book. Uh, and if you're like me, it'll make you end up reading all of Tom Clancy's books and spend like two years doing it, which was awesome. Like I don't read it like regularly as much anymore, just because I don't have, I don't know what to read. I like used to just like read Tom Clancy because his books just kept getting longer and longer. His longest one. Uh, executive orders. I think that's the longest one. It's like 1,400 pages paperback, man. That shit is nuts. It took me forever to read that, but it was oh so good. Alright, so screw this crap. Uh, oh, ESM, hello. Land-based air radar. Two two, seven, three. Uh, I'm going to speed up time a little bit see if there's anything else. Ah, that's it. Whatever. Alright, lower. Off. Off. All right, let's uh, let's go a little deep. Let's go 30 meters. 30, 30, 30, 30. Go to depth zero. Right. Uh, Three, anything with sonar zero, yet? No. Nope. All right, I'm gonna speed up time then. This mission's probably gonna be kind of uneventful, but that's fine. Don't try to read your sonar when. <laughs> You're going fast. All right, go a little deeper. Give me three nine meters. That's good. Go to depth I'm gonna get away. Three, I'm gonna get away from the surface clutter. Meters, depth control I. Uh, anything on the sonar, dude? I'm not even seeing shit. Oh, this might be something actually. It's holding pretty steady that peak right there. Eh, maybe it's not. All right. Da 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 da. So three thirty three. Three hours and thirty three minutes. Uh, three hours is 180 minutes, so that's uh, 210 divided by 16. That's like uh, 12 minutes ish. So if I stay in this state, so we'll get there in like 12 minutes. Damn. All right, there's probably gonna be some good cutting, some good cutting in this video. Then I'm gonna go a little deeper and see if I can hear anything. Go to depth zero. I don't imagine there's any kind of layer. Oh, that is a contact. Oh, there is a layer. 167 meters. Where am I gonna be at 167 meters? I guess right here I could go below the layer if I had to, but yeah, I was right about the contact. Control acoustics. No contact acoustics. Two, one, nine. Holy zero. shit! Uh, there's a lot of crap on the conformal. Uh, wasn't seeing it on the broadband. 
Right? There's nothing else here on the broadband. I guess the narrow band's picking all our, up all our contacts today. Ticonderoga, what? That's not right. Nimitz. What the hell is going on here? <laughs> uh, okay, well this guy is really close aboard this one over here. Where, the f where are you? Show yourself. Dude, sometimes these contacts, like, they just... Ugh, just don't want to show up. Oh, come on. Man. But yeah, the narrow band on Russian ships absolutely sucks. Because you can't... It just, like, automatically, like, gives you a classification. On the American subs, I didn't have a chance to show you in the last mission, because that mission took all three fucking minutes. On the American subs, it gives you a, a, a graph, um, a frequency spectrum graph that shows the frequencies that make up your contacts, so you can, like, by hand, like, look up, like, there's a, the, the DW manual, Dangerous Waters manual has a, a sonar frequency chart that you can look at, and you can actually figure out, like, what the contacts are. So, uh, but this doesn't have that. You're just kind of at the fucking mercy of this thing. But it's not coming up, man. Why is it not coming up? Ugh. Am I even getting demon on it? Oh, I can only do demon on the cylindrical. <laughs> cylindrical sucks. Shit. Uh, all right. I have, I, I got nothing. I don't know. I might go shallow again to try and see what's up. Ticonderoga still, Nimitz. Apparently we're in the middle of an American battle group. <laughs> There's an American battle group in Kamchatka. Oh, there we go. Slow down. What else could you be? You could be a Ticonderoga VLS. Apparently there are Ticonderogas that don't have VLS. You could be a torpedo, an oiler, a cargo ship, a trawler, a Type 42. Is that a torpedo? Kata. Kashin. Udaloys are all tons of different surface ships. Savramini, Luda, Luda One Chinese. That's a that's a Russian ship that the Chinese bought. Luhu Chinese, Cassard France, Torville Lafayette, Lafayette. That's the uh, that's the ship in uh, Goldeneye on that one mission frigate. I'm pretty sure that's what that is. All right, so I'm gonna say that there's a chance that this is a surface ship or a 65 centimeter. Torpedo. <laughs> oh, a Congo. It's like the famous uh, destro uh, battleship in World War II. Alright, well, I'm just going to speed up time again. We've got haste to make. Haste is waste. we got to get to this drop. Oh, I see a contact right here. Yeah, yeah. There's another one right here. Sweet. I had him on the narrowband, but now I have him on the broadband. It's not really giving me separate contacts. I'm gonna auto crew the old sonar for a little bit. Why not? Ain't, ain't much shit going on. And then I'll auto crew the TMA. Let them have some fun. It can be tedious to just have to do that crap all the time, especially if they're not gonna kill you. If they're gonna kill me, I'm more inclined to do it myself, but otherwise I'm fine with letting the auto crew do it and just give me an idea where these dudes are. So what's he calling them? Ah, Vishnaya! This is that ship I was talking about in the last mission. This is the uh, the old spy ship. Looks like it has some rocket launchers on it. Maybe SAM missiles. I don't think the Russians have a sea whiz system. A la minigun. Whoa, a cruise ship. Hello. Alright, uh, fancy a peek? I do. Let's do it. I hope he doesn't overshoot. It tends to overshoot and then sail exposed, and I don't want to expose my sail. That's what this is, is the sail. Or the conning tower, you can call it that too. Uh, mass antennas, raise the periscope. Raise the ESM mast. Raise the radio, you want to keep up with comms in case shit's changing and going crazy. Um, they, I've always worried about them being able to counter detect my comms, but it's not like a radio station where it just transmits in all directions. These comms, like, has to be pointed at a satellite, so you can't really detect it. <laughs> if that makes any sense. 225, let's check them out. Anything on the ESM besides that land base? Oh, there's something else on the ESM down here. Oh, there's something else up here, too. But. It can be tricky when they take forever to, oh, there it is, there it is, there it is. Alright, good enough. Master Van, 225. 
Was it 225 or 245? 225. Let's give you a little zoom a zoom. Yep, there we go. We got ourselves a ship. I don't think that is a. No contact what they say it is. Uh, it might be. It might be. I'm not really seeing the balls of fury. Well, I thought I saw a plane. No, but that might be it, though. That might be the, uh, the Kashin, or whatever the hell it's called. Vishnaya, whatever. <laughs> Kashin's a big cruiser destroyer type thing. Alright, let's look around again. I'll check the scope again. But yeah, I gotta wanna, wanna watch out for that bastard. So I might actually run below the layer for a little bit. Um, why not? Just get wait for that guy to go overhead. Uh, I want to see if I have demon data for that guy. I may actually do some some uh, manual TMA. I just want to see where he's going to be in the near future, so I can plan accordingly. Is he turning? Photo. Good old statimeter. Oh, but here's this guy. Isn't this the one where it like does automatically? Nope. I want Russia. Russia, 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 Russia. How the fuck does that look like an alligator? Here we go, V Snyder. I still don't get if it's supposed to be all the way to the tippy top of the mast or to like the top of like the mast head, but whatever. Oh, yeah, there's the track. Ten kilometers. Uh, let's see if there's anything. Oh, of course my star is now to shit. Um. I don't think I have one that's electrical. Uh, Alright, let's go deep. Not deep, but let's get down there. Mass antennas lower all. 4 8 meters. Speed of time. Dip control I. 